Well, good run. Thanks, dude. Okay, we want to welcome you today to our uh, 242nd birthday celebration of the United States Marine Corps and also a celebration of uh, Veterans Day, which will be this Saturday. Today we are going to talk about veterans. We're going to uh, uh, honor some veterans. Those of you that are new, uh, come on over to the high school. There are several times when I'll have you stand. Uh, just be ready to be ready to do that. We're going to make you honorary Marines today for the cake cutting ceremony. Normally, that's held by Marines for Marines, but we're going to do it for the whole high school. So you are a part of that today. Everybody ready to go? Give me a oorah! No. Is everybody ready? Give me a oorah! Yeah, we're ready to go. Now you're honorary Marines. All right, we're ready to go. Sound attention. Please stand, come to attention. Everybody in the audience, hands salute over your heart. Now the national anthem. Please remain standing at attention until the flag, the colors have exited. Give our choir a hand. Thank you so much for <laughs> You may be seated. Thank you, choir. This portion of the uh, assembly will be about a cake cutting ceremony for the 242nd birthday of the Marine Corps. So before we do that, we're going to read the uh, Commandant's message.
On November 1, 1921, John A. Lejeune, the 13th Commandant of the Marine Corps, directed that a reminder of the Corps be published by every command to all Marines throughout the globe on the birthday of the Corps. Since the day, Marines have continued to distinguish themselves on many battlefields and foreign shores in war and peace. On this day of the birthday of the Corps, therefore, in compliance with the will of the 13th Commandant, Article 38 of the United States Marine Corps Manual, edition of 1921, is as published as follows. On, t on November 10, 1775, the Corps of Marines was created by a resolution of the Continental Congress. Since that date, many thousand of men have borne the name Marine. In memory of them, it is fitting that we who are Marines should commemorate the birthday of the Corps by calling to mind the glories of its long and illustrious history. The record of our Corps is one which will bear comparison of that to the famous military organizations in the world's history. During 90 of the 146 years of its existence, the Marine Corps has been in action against the nation's foes. From the Battle of Trenton to the Argonne, Marines have won foremost honors in war and the long arrows of tranquility at home. Generation after generation of Marines have grown gray in war in both hemispheres and in every corner of the seven seas that our country and its citizens might enjoy peace and security. In every battle and skirmish since the birth of our Corps, Marines have acquitted themselves with the greatest distinction, winning new honors on each occasion until the term Marine has come to signify all that is in the highest of military efficiency and soldierly virtue. This high name of distinction and soldierly repute we who are Marines today have received from those who precede us in the Corps. With it, we have also received from them the eternal spirit which has animated our Corps from generation to generation and has also been the distinguishing mark of the Marines in every age. So long as, it, as the spirit continues to flourish, Marines will be found equal to every emergency in the future as they have been in the past. And the men of our nation will regard us as worthy successors to the long line of illustrious men who have served as soldiers of the sea since the founding of the Corps. And now the message from the current Commandant, General Neller. 75 years ago today, after months of fighting at Henderson Field and along Edson's Ridge, Marines on Guadalupe Canal spent the night of 10 November 1942 planning and preparing. Although the Battle of Guadalupe Canal would continue for three more months, the plans laid on our Corps' most sacred day became integral to the amphibious campaigns that followed. Success at Guadalupe Canal proved to be the turning point that ultimately paved the way for Allied victory in the Pacific. Those warriors defended their positions in brutal conditions against a formidable enemy and triumphed. Through every major conflict our nation has been in since the Revolution, Marines have performed their duty with utmost courage, devotion, and raw determination. Their valiant deeds in the face of overwhelming challenges give us confidence and inspire us to meet the trials of today. As we pause to celebrate the birth of our Corps this year, we honor the legacy that was passed down to us and we recommit ourselves to carrying those traditions onto the future. This November 10th marks 242 years of warfighting excellence at places like Trenton, Tripoli, Chapultepec, Bellawood, Guadalcanal, Chosen, Quezon, Fallujah, Sangin, and so many others, Marines have fought with an inner spirit, a spirit that bonds us, binds us together as a cohesive team. It is that intangible spirit that has formed the foundation of our warfighting reputation for the past 242 years. Now it's our responsibility to ensure we honor and carry on that legacy. The American people expect a core of men and women who are committed, selfless, willing to sacrifice, who epitomize honor, courage, commitment, virtue, and character. We owe our nation and our predecessors no less. Today, as we celebrate our 242nd birthday, we re must remember who we are, where we came from, and why we're here. We must remember the past, honor those who are no longer with us, focus on today's battles, and get ready for tomorrow. We can and will prevail as we always have in any climate place, but we must prevail together, united by the unyielding spirit in each of us that makes our Corps unique. That willingness to put our Corps and fellow Marines ahead of ourselves. Victory in battle comes through the integrated efforts of many. Teamwork. We value those sacrifices and contributions of every Marine and sailor, as well as our family members, without whose support, our nation's expert, or without whose support, we will not be able to accomplish our missions. And we remain committed to being our nation's expeditionary force in readiness that sets the standard for honor, discipline, and courage. 
I am proud of each and every one of you. Happy birthday, Marines. Semper Fidelis, signed, General Robert B. Neller, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Thank you, Addison. Please rise. As Marines, anytime the Marine Corps hymn is played, the Marines come to attention and stand. The tradition is, is that we have a guest of honor who would give the first piece of cake. He eats a bite of that cake and then passes it on to the oldest Marine present. Today we're going to do the cadets. And then the oldest cadet passes it on to the youngest cadet, signifying the passing of tradition and honor, courage and commitment from one generation of Marines to the next. The only thing we need today, the only thing we're missing is a guest of honor. That would be Master Sergeant Williams. Would you come out, please? Give our guest of honor a hand. This is new to Master Sergeant Williams. This was a surprise because I was afraid if I told him he was, he wouldn't come today. Uh, he has been a friend of mine and working with him now for, this is our 22nd year here at Sepulpa High School. And through that 22 years, uh, we've become like an old married couple. Uh, most of the time we don't even have to talk. We know what each other is thinking and what we're going to do. And our focus is cadets working with cadets, for cadets, and sometimes having to work on cadets. But we're, it is an honor today uh, to present Master Sergeant Williams as our guest of honor. I will cut the piece of cake, first piece of cake, give it to him, and then the next piece of cake he will pass on to the oldest cadet. Our oldest cadet today is Jonathan Hayward. He was born 6 November 1998. Then he will pass the piece of cake on to the youngest cadet, Cadet Gabrielle Kilgore. He was born 11 July, 2004. March off the cake.
just before we conclude while you're at attention, we will all sing the Marine Corps hymn. First verse. Is everybody familiar with that? Read my lips. Okay. Are you ready? Here we go. Come to attention. Ready? Sing. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we will hide our country battles in the air on the dead sea. First to fight for right and freedom and to keep our And we all go, hoorah. You may be seated. Fantastic. All right, that can uh, attack. Attack. All right. Watch it. they don't fall over hopefully all right the first part the first thing we're going to do today is oh, for the veterans day assembly is mr shibley is coming up and we have the honor of presenting a diploma to a veteran who left high school in order to join the army mr court could you come up please On behalf of Sepulpa High School in the state of Oklahoma, we proudly present this high school diploma to you. We thank you so much for your service and all that you did. Uh, everybody give him a, a round of applause. Now he is, he is the lone army guy we got here today, but we love him. And we're at the uh, end of the uh, ceremony here today, on your way out. You know what I always say, right? Ever, anybody can say thank you to a vet. You really love them, give them a hug. Thank you. Soldier. Hoorah. Give him a hand. Now we'd like to introduce to you uh, one of the uh, founders of the Sepulpa High School Marine Corps JROTC, and he has a uh, uh, story he wants to tell you. Lieutenant Colonel John Mark Young. This is really an honor for me to be here today. I am in the class of 1968 of Sepulpa High School, and I used to think that people who came to our high school that had graduated a long time ago were old, and now I see how wrong I was at that time. <laughs> I would also add that that is the same year that the mother and father of Mr. Shibley, your principal, graduated from high school in my high school graduating class. But at any rate, I've written a story here, and I want to read it to you. Uh, about something very special and someone very special to me. <clears throat> if you want a copy of it, it'll be on page four of the Sepulpa Herald this weekend. What now? It had taken years. It had been a lot of hard work and hours of study, but he's done it. And he had a sheet of paper in his hand to prove it, a high school diploma. When you're a little kid, your parents hand you everything, but as you grow older, you have to do more of it yourself. Now, he finally had that diploma. But when it came right down to it, that high school diploma was certainly something to be proud of, but it was just a stepping stone. But a stepping stone to what? <clears throat> In 1967, the Vietnam War was raging a half a world away, and most of young people reaching age 18 would be drafted to fight in it. It wasn't a good time to be entering the adult world. This young man didn't know exactly what, it, we, what he would be doing with his life, but he knew he wasn't going to be one of those protesting the war. 
He didn't know a whole lot about life, but he knew that his country, with all its faults, had allowed him to grow up in freedom and peace. That American flag that he and his classmates had saluted every day in the Pledge of Allegiance stood for something, and in his heart of hearts, he knew it was worth respecting and even fighting for. Then one day, just before graduation, he ran into a man at his high school in Macon, Georgia. The man was tough-looking, sturdy, and with one look, the young man could tell that this guy had it all together. He was wearing a military uniform, held out his hand to him and said, I'm Sergeant Woody Hill and I'm a United States Marine. In that one instant, the next phase of his life, the rest of his whole life, fell into place. He wanted to be a United States Marine just like this recruiter. It wouldn't be easy. That spring, on May 31st, 1967, just after graduating from high school, he was shipped off to Marine boot camp at Paris Island. He graduated with a job description in the Marine Corps of 0311. That's a combat rifleman in the infantry. When the government talks about putting boots on the ground somewhere, that meant his boots. <clears throat> he was soon putting his boots on the ground with Bravo Company, 9th Marines, and the 3rd Marine Division in the Republic of Vietnam. The following year, those boots were fighting at the Battle of Khe Sanh on Hills 881, 861, and 471 in one of the fiercest battles of the whole war, and he was in the thick of it. A small Marine combat base atop the hills surrounding Khe Sanh was intended to be a base to interrupt enemy supply lines in the area, and the North Vietnamese attacked it with a vastly superior force. This young man was one of a larger Marine force in to rescue and reinforce their fellow Marines. In one heavy mortar barrage on February 5, 1968, in the battle he dashed out to rescue his buddy who had fallen wounded in the attack. That's when he too was wounded by mortar shrapnel in his right leg as he dragged his buddy back. He was awarded the Purple Heart for his heroism and for living out the Marine's creed to leave no one behind. He was in country for one year and 20 days and then shipped back to Camp Lejeune in the States. Not long after he returned, the Marines and his unit were told to divide into two groups. And they took, made a choice. And the group he was in was selected to go back to Vietnam. For him, it was his second tour, but not the last combat tour in service to his country. Later, he participated in the evacuation of the American Embassy in Saigon in April of 1975 and the rescue of the crew of the civilian merchant ship Mayaguez off the coast of Cambodia the following May. In 1990, he was deployed in, to Panama as part of Operation Just Cause to depose and capture Manuel Noriega, the, his dictator, and to protect the Panama Canal. In 1994, he was part of the United Nations sanctioned Operation Uphold Democracy in Haiti, which staged out of Guantanamo Naval Base to restore the elected president to power who had been overthrown in a military coup. Along the way, he served with General John Kelly, aboard the USS Forrestal, who is now the President's Chief of Staff. When the Gulf War started, this Marine, who was then the Senior Operation Chief for the 6th Marine Regiment, answered the call for Operation Desert Storm to liberate Kuwait. By that time, the young man had become the epitome of the Marine Sergeant that once shook his hand and inspired him to become one of the few the proud the Marines. For the past 21 years, he's been fulfilling that role at Zapalpa High School, setting an example for our young men and women of integrity, leadership, devotion to duty, discipline, and respect for our country and our flag. This is his last Veterans Day on, this, on the staff of the Marine Junior ROTC at Zapalpa High School. He'll be retiring at the end of this school year. The students, whose lives he's changed, know him as top. But we in the Marine Corps know him as Master Sergeant Richard Williams III. Congratulations and thanks, Top, for a job well done for our country, our young people, and our school. We'll miss you and Semper Fi. see the resemblance of you now with when you were 
18. <laughs> Do you have any words you'd say? I was afraid of that. So I have something prepared. As every teacher in here knows that every teenager is different. Everyone requires something different in order to educate them. In a Marine Corps JROTC program we built together here in 1996 has stayed together for this 22 years. I can tell you right now, it will never be the same without Master Sergeant Williams. And at the end of this school year, he's going to retire after 22 years here at Sepulpa and 20, how many years in the Marine Corps? 28 years in the Marine Corps. So do the math. He's been in the Marine Corps a long time. The, to be able to continue to just get up every morning and put the uniform on, what a privilege. But it's my privilege and honor as a senior Marine instructor here at Sepulpa High School to publicly thank Master Sergeant Williams in front of the people that we teach and the people that we uh, demonstrate and walk in front of every day. It's because of you that we're here and because of you that Master Sergeant Williams has kept on this long. And he's had to put up with me too. So that makes a big, that's a, that's a big deal. Master Sergeant Williams, thank you so much. It's an honor. Oh, I had hoped that he would take the mic, but I kind of knew what was going to happen. We have two more parts to our assembly today. This next one is the most solemn part of the assembly. Marines, soldiers, sailors, airmen, anytime we get together for a formal occasion, we try our best to set up a table. As you'll see the table off to my, you, uh, you go ahead and raise the screen, please. The table over to my right is the, uh, we call it the POW MIA table. I have a poem I want to read to you signifying the importance of this table to all military service men and women. The table is small, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against his or her suppressors. The tablecloth is white, symbolic of the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms. The single rose in the vase signifies the blood they have shed in sacrifice to ensure freedom for our beloved, beloved United States of America. The rose also reminds us of the family and friends of our missing comrades who keep faith while awaiting their return. The red ribbon on the, kit, on the vase signifies the red ribbons worn on the lapels of thousands who demand with unyielding determination a proper account of our comrades who are not among us today. A slice of lemon on the plate reminds us of their bitter fate. The salt sprinkled on the plate reminds us of the countless volunteers of families as they wait. The glass is inverted. They cannot toast with us at this time. The chair is empty. They are not here. The candle is reminiscent of the light of hope that lives in their hearts to illuminate their way home, away from their captors, to the open arms of, grateful, of a grateful nation. The American flag that we have with us today on the, that's on the table represents and reminds us of the many of them that may never return and had paid the supreme sacrifice to ensure our freedom. Let us pray to the supreme commander
that all of our comrades will soon be back within our ranks. Let us remember and never forget their sacrifice. May God forever watch over them and protect them and their families. Please stand. If we could have a moment of silence for all of the soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guard, who have either lost their lives, who haven't returned, or are still prisoners of war in a foreign land. A moment of silence, please. Thank you. And now it's another time to come to attention. We have the honor today Normally we play this uh, as from a recording or have someone come up and play a bugle that already has a recording on it. But today we have the honor of two of Sepulpa High School band members, Milana Klonicki and Dylan Wilson. We'll play for you today, it's Echoing Taps. And if you've ever heard taps before, this taps is a little different and it'll reach down into your heart. Please come to attention. Battalion, out it, hook, present, hook. Thank you so much. Thank you. You may be seated. All right, this is a fun part. This is the ending of the, of the assembly, and we want to recognize all of you and all of your family and the ones who have gone before you. We're going to play the service hymns. As the service hymn is played, if you have a relative, a mother, brother, sister, father, uncle, anyone in your family that was in that service, I want you to stand. Uh, let's go ahead and raise the, the house lights so that we can uh, see everybody as they stand for their service. Now, if you've got someone that's uh, one of these families that's got an Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine uh, Coast Guard in their family, you just stand back up again, okay? I want you to stand for every one of them. All right, let's go ahead and start the service hymns. United States Army.
Thank you. You may be seated. I want to thank the superintendent, Mr. Armstrong, and Mr. Billy, and Mr. Shibley for allowing us to, uh, and trusting us, to put on a Veterans Assembly for you that you can be proud of, for people that we serve and the people that we honor today are those that have gone before us, those that are in our midst today, those that are on the battlefield right now, not only in Afghanistan, but on ships in uh, the Pacific, the Atlantic, every ocean in the, in the world has got American servicemen serving now in harm's way. This is a bad world. There are bad people in this world. But there's also good people, and there's also people to protect and to help and to fight and to keep the fight away from the United States of America. Honor your vets. Thank them for their service. But I heard a a vet the other day when someone said thank you for your service they reached out shook their hand and they said what about your service you may not go in the army navy the air force or the marine corps when you graduate but i challenge you to serve your fellow man in some way in your community in your church in your family the better country we become is because of people that serve not the people that are served it's not all about taking, it's about giving, and giving, and giving. Because I guarantee you one thing, you will get a whole lot more out of giving than you ever get out of getting something. Thank you for all the servicemen. Thank you for all of you, for the respect that you show, for your honor and your courage. Continue learning, graduate, get out of here, and then really start life. Okay, that is all that I have. If Mr. Shibley is coming now, and I'm going to tell you what you are going to be doing next. I don't have to add to that because that was perfectly said. Um, I challenge you guys, just like he said, to reflect on what you do, uh, what you want to do after high school, and choose to serve somehow. If it's in the armed forces, if it's in your community, uh, your profession, whatever you do, uh, choose to serve, right? I want to thank all of our guests here today. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part. You guys are the reason why we do this. Um, uh, <coughs> students, find a veteran. Uh, the 11th of this month is Veterans Day. It falls on a Sunday. Find a veteran, shake their hands, thank them. Um, you guys are perfect today. I want to commend you guys. One last thing, uh, I want to thank our cadets up here for their participation, making this a great ceremony. But also Major Swepson. He has done this for 22 years at the school. He built the program, he and Master Sergeant. Not only is Master Sergeant Williams retiring this year, but so is Major. And I want to personally thank him uh, and I want you guys to give him a big round of applause as well. If you haven't got a chance to ever meet these two gentlemen who have served our school for so long and served our country, uh, come by. You know, stop by before the end of the year. Talk to them, shake their hand, uh, tell them thank you even though that you're not in their program. They care about you guys like you're up here on the stage. So thank you guys so much for, for being uh, polite, courteous, and respectful today. I want to uh, dismiss our guests first today. If we have guests in the audience, you guys, students, be seated really quickly. Guests. All of these gentlemen up here are the ones who actually were here in 1996 when we started this program, but except for Mr. Corman, but I want him up here because he's one of our best present today. 
So I want you to, uh, this is, of course, Master Sergeant Williams. This is uh, Captain Randy Cornelius. This is Colonel Jim Gill. This is uh, Sergeant Marty McKnight. And this is Lieutenant Colonel Mark Young. And Sergeant Sir, uh, Spec, Spec 4 Corman. <laughs> I, I get it right, those Army deals. Thank you, guys. We're going to get a picture uh, for the paper for this. Uh, these are the ones that started this whole thing. Okay. Teachers and students, you guys are dismissed to your third hour class.